Hello, we're back. We have we have bioed and uh, Pallara has uh, through hook or crook getting cl ever closer to the uh, the god of fire. Um, she's uh, convinced Bata not to um, mince mince words with her, at least over this. And now, yeah, now we're working out the loan. Um, Cool. So, Judd, you were saying over, over chat, over break, like maybe we don't need to make a resources test for this. Um, if if we were going to play another dozen games of Polara, then like I think how in debt this puts her or possibly puts her would be interesting. But mm -hmm. I don't think it's really important. Like it's just like this is it. So yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm not interested in the failure results. I feel like I, I'm always. Like whenever I, I do, is this role necessary? I'd say, am I interested in how the failure would look? Yeah. And I'm not really interested. So yeah, it's not like you're going to roll and then be like, well, we can't go to war. Let's just go home. Like, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, so, I feel like the, the costs that could be of Polara being in debt to them or having to spend out of uh, the dragon's hoard and or the humans you know having to call on that human's debt like i feel like right. all of that's kind of up in the air and i'm happy for that to be like possibilities that are lingering in our imaginations and and i'm cool with like this is a pretty normal cost of living expense for a dwarven prince right so if this is just like in, a, in you know in a year of game time you know part of your uh, you know, resource like yearly annual resources check. I'm totally cool with that. Yeah. Um, it doesn't need to be gamified because we're not, we just don't need to. Um, but yeah, I think, but um, Brulat is definitely going. And, and you know, that means. The yeah, end of I know that means his, his doom, right? Yeah. So um, I got to stop that. And I, I yeah. got to stop that. Or I got to try at least. Um, and I, you know, I mean, there's a part of me that's like, it's weird how quickly I'm going from like, oh, I'll just talk to people to, um, do I need to sabotage a lot in some way? Like, 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 how could I do that to a friend? But I'm so afraid he's not gonna listen to me. But like, I think I'm gonna find him, does he pray? Is that a thing? I don't think we don't have priests. I don't know if we, if there's, Time spent um, in, in prayer. He might go see the burning wheel one more time. Yeah. You know? I think I want to find him on his way, like, back down the hill. I mean, or, or do you want to find him, like, at the wheel? Yeah, that sounds great, actually. Cool. Even better. Um, cool, yeah. I think there is, like, a shrine at the top of Wheel Halt. And, uh, I mean, I don't think it looks like human prayer, right? I think he's sitting in front of it with his axe on his lap. Um, and his armor is like on a stand nearby. And he's looking at the wheel and just like, you know, sipping a nog and thinking, looking out over, you know, the whole continent practically from here. Yeah. Oh, the views up here. The air is thin. The view yeah. Is amazing. yeah. 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 And, and yeah, I don't think it looks like, you know, a, a temple or a church or a mosque. I think it's just him up here in the bracing cold thin air, looking at a magical wheel on fire, on magical fire yep. that encompasses all of magic in the world and like cleaning his own axe and sharpening it and, and thinking about the battle to come. And uh, I think when you when you when you when you come up, uh, I think his like his abudar like lets you in, and uh, he he gestures for you to like you know sit at a bench next to him. Yeah, I think I sit down next to him and I like take some of his ale, take some of his nog. Yeah, and and like drink drink a little bit of his nog uh, as a familiar gesture, and. Um, and I say, uh, and I kind of look up at the wheel and I squint because it's bright and it's looking into a fire, which is not easy to do. And, uh, and I say, do you ever, uh, ever feel like he talks to you? 
Hmm. No. He's a mystery to me. Hmm. I only know that his sigil is has been my family's responsibility from the first days of Wheelholt. When the last notes of the elves singing the world and the stars into place were still ringing in the air. That's an important uh, duty. And uh, one I'm glad I don't have to carry out. Uh, because I think if that was what I was oath sworn to do, then um, I'd have a hard time leaving this place, knowing I was leaving it without its defender. Uh, protector of the wheel. Which is which is a callback to when Bulat was first introduced to Bina back, uh, yeah, you know, as student of the Archmage, protector of the wheel. Yeah. Uh, well, if you believed a crazed dwarf who said that she's has heard from him, the Lord of Fire spoke to you. in a dream, but one that was not a dream. And I feel him. And he knows the path that I'm on, and he knows the path that you're on. And he has given me one very, very small piece of warning. Yeah, he like sits up and like puts the ax on a stand to the side and like puts the nog down and just like leans forward and just concentrates on you and said, what was the warning? I, I, I'm trying to think if Polara would like hide any of this. I just, I don't, th I don't think she would. Uh, I think she says, if you go on this, if you go on this, um, what did we call, what did, what did, what do we name the expedition? This venture? No, this, um, God, we named what, what an expedition what, was. Was it campaign? No, it was something more or more like, that's fine. I, I'll, I'll say campaign. Yeah. I, yeah, there, yeah. There was, there was a name we gave for, for an expedition. Uh, and I, and I, and it's, it wouldn't be the right thing to use as a host, but I, Polara would use it anyway. But imagine she's using the, the term that's used for going on a on a dangerous expedition. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna. If you go on this campaign, you you won't come back. As much as I want you by my side, I cannot rob Wheel Holt of its protector. I can't rob the wheel of its protector. Thank you for telling me. I will make the announcement of my heir very plain. You are too young to pass down your, 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 your hold. I am old enough to remember the last Archmage. I am old enough to have learned at his knee when my first beard was barely a stubble on my chin. I've seen enough. This is... People talk about evil. There's not much things that are evil in the world I found. There's a lot of greed, a lot of spite, a lot of power hunger, and cowardice, not true evil. This handmaiden might be it. Dying, fighting that, showing other princes that we can go out into the world and do good at the heads of our hosts. I thank the Lord of Fire for letting me know. And 
and uh and Polar is like it, it, it's clear on her face that she's searching like searching his fate like she's searching a part she's searching for like a crack in his demeanor and she's not mm-hmm. finding it she's searching for a way in to like convince him to rethink and she's just being very quiet she's not saying anything because she's not able to find any 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 way to yeah to counter it and um and it's funny because there's a part of her that like wants to give in to greed and walk down that dragon road and obviate the need for him to come at all right but there's like a part of what he's saying which is like if we want to be set good examples for everyone else then we need to do the work ourselves and her turning into a big old dragon that terrifies everybody would 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 do the opposite of that like it's it's right it's suspension of that it's holding back on going down that road that is like what she finds so honorable and respectable in him right now right um yeah uh, she says, I, I, I think were we, were we, um, were we the, the stars looking down on this, on this land, we wouldn't see the spiders as evil either. Um, we would see them as As um, as predators eating their prey, as, as 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 giants stomping on ants that they're hardly aware of. But I, we don't have the luxury of seeing things as the stars do. We, I wasn't just blustering, and I wasn't just. I wasn't speaking in hyperbole when I spoke when I don't think any of us are speaking in hyperbole when we told the Gilders how dire this was and whether they are true evil if that actually does exist or not they are not a threat that can be um, can be ignored can be contained and yeah I think Polar is just saying like she, she's not convincing anyone but herself. She's like, not, this isn't yeah. like, he's already on board. She's yeah. just walking through the motion trying to justify losing her friend. Yeah. And that's really, really hard for her. She doesn't want to lose her friend. Yeah. But that's, at the end of the day, that's the only thing that's like holding it back. Like, it's not the good of Will Holt. I mean, that is true. It is the good of Will Holt. But like, he's willing, he's ready to to, to pass it on. Yeah, I think I think if he knows he's going to this ready and willing, she doesn't you know, she's she's got nothing else to tell him. Cool. Yeah, I think you you leave him there uh in front of the wheel, um, kind of staring at it. Nice. Um, I think at some point in the night, probably when you're gone, he gets drunk and bellows at it a bit and uh lets it know that he's coming yeah he doesn't he doesn't fear anything and uh yeah i think he yeah that's it yeah. uh southward we march yeah i think so we've got the host i am curious as to whether or not we ever hear any word from zargon or yeah uh or the jeweled wound like they they like peaced out, but now that there's a dwarven host marching, it's a lot bigger deal than just what yeah. Prince Polara wants. It's three it's three hosts marching, and I just wonder if they want any piece of that um, warrior or not. I think they don't. Yeah. I think they stay. I think they sit this one out. Um, I think they know that this is the part of the campaign you know where things look really bright and shiny and it's like oh i wish we were there but like they know what's coming like they they're they're not ignorant of war um and and yeah i think uh i think zargon you know keeps keeps the the one prince out yeah yeah yep 
cool 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 um, awesome yeah yeah cool. i so i think uh the host gathers um and swells in number the iron gods uh come in great numbers um as do i think a bunch of the iron dukes nice uh a bunch of their cavalry a bunch of their knights and uh yeah and word Kubica returning on the back of a horse with some very long-legged um knight that's right that's... right yes totally <laughs> totally and uh um, I think the host marches, you know, all the way down the jeweled road and then camps around Karakage. Nice. Uh, and then heads east on the Duke's Road um, until they get to the southern tip of that, of the eastern forest. Um, and I think that's where, like, that's where you all, like, meet the, the spiders. Um, I think they've kind of taken over that mm -hmm. that forest. Um, you know, have decimated a bunch of the castles in the area. Uh, I think a lot of the eastern dukes uh, are are there with you in the battle, and uh, it's not so much about winning or losing. Although I think a lot of people fall. Yeah. Um, and and you know the world looks a lot different after it. Um, I think it's about uh, uh, you know you, you you were talking about losing your friend Bulat, and I think that was in, an interesting callback because the first friend you lost in this was. Uh, was um what's Fiona. his name Fiona Cecile. Uh, Fiona, Fiona Cecile yeah um who who became Orca Ortho yeah and uh yeah I think you you see him across the battlefield um he is he's not riding like they don't ride the spiders like a saddle they mm -hmm. like stand on them Inside. like a like a garbage truck right yeah. and then they he's he's throwing javelins um and i think you see the the job like he picks up a javelin and you know that that's the one that does it and he throws it across the field and uh and it it hits bulat full in the chest and and punctures his breastplate and uh um I think you you see you know Orko, uh, you know jump off of the, off of the spider and go to finish it, mm -hmm. um, and and I think you know over the, over dying Bulat I think is where you end up meeting him. Nice. Yeah, I'm 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 charging over on my on my on my short, short flags, but yeah. I'm, um, I think you know just as. Uh, just as he's going to rain, you know, ring the the finishing blow. Uh, not that he, not that I'm going to stop him from this yeah. permanently, but I think that the moment we see is this, uh, you know, very sort of Captain America moment where, like, just as he's going to like drop the finishing blow, that's when the sh that's when the, the 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 javelin scrapes off the shield that Bulat, uh, you know, like it sparks almost off off off, off of the shield that yeah. That, um, the lot gave and and I'm I'm standing uh, uh, I am standing over him uh, to to defend him. Cool. Um, and and looking and and sort of appraising what Ax what Axel Ortho looks like now. Like he's yeah. he's physically sort of changed, and I think um, I think Polara has physically changed as well. I think she is just like not not in not in his extreme of fashion but like she, she's she's wearing this you know this she has this amazing shield but she also like uh last time he left her she was a minor who declared herself a prince now she is a prince and i think that there's a part of that that's you know is visible to, to him as well the way her, her 
beard is braided, the way her her ornament and the way she sort of hand, holds herself. Yeah. Yeah, I think he. We, I, I think like he's walking over to Brulat, and he's got the javelin on his shoulder, and Brulat is laying there gurgling, and he can't even say anything, and he just like lifts up his gauntleted finger and flips him off. You know, fuck you, orc. And uh, yeah, um, the 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 orc who you know the bone orc who used to be your friend uh, does look a lot different. I think his his face is like unnaturally smooth almost chitinous mm -hmm. and uh and and i think his 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 teeth are like um like just, just don't quite fit in his mouth anymore um and his eyes his his eyes have gone from lynx like to really spider like yeah and uh and i think he has like tattoos of um like eight other eyes like a spider would have going oh, down his cool. face. Yeah. And uh and and his hair is shaved and he's bald. Um and uh yeah, I think he's just like a like really where before he was pale and he seemed kind of bone white, now he is really just a a, a you know, a, a white color that you just don't see very often. Um and uh in in nature. And uh, I think when he sees you, he smiles and he says, uh, what a pair we've become. Who would have thought um, a couple of miners uh, and, and like, there's that like one time she made him like swing a pick. That she's yeah, been, yeah, like, yeah. Call him a miner ever since, right? Like, yeah. who would have thought a couple of miners uh, would uh, would end up here on a battlefield? Um, and she has a pick in her hand. I mean, that's that's yeah. the thing she that feels the most comfortable to her. Uh, it's it's the thing that she knows, right? Um, and uh, she says, "Was it, did you find what you were looking for?" And I think he like gestures like around this slaughter right and and you know a, a spider with two legs left is dragging itself across you know leaving its entrails you know, across the ground as it like sinks its fangs into a horse and a knight goes over and like you know breaks you know its collarbone breaks her collarbone falling and drags herself to to you know kill it and and um you know a, a, another uh uh, a band of, you know, uh, uh, a dwarf is getting torn apart uh, by a giant wolf spider. It's just like, you know, war is terrible anyway, but this yeah. is just a caricature of it, you know, with yeah. giant spiders. And he says, this, this is what I was looking for. I wanted the world to take off its mask and show us who it really was. This this is what the world has been hiding. This is what the world really is. Everything else is play acting. You think everyone here is being their truest self? You think that this is, this is finally the truth? The, 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 the people are finally sharing how they really feel? Because you've been traveling with spiders for some time, but I've been traveling with dwarves and humans and elves and orcs and trolls. And I can tell you what they really feel right now, which is terror and unity and camaraderie. I let's have... see how long let's see how long that lasts. They came here together knowing full well the carnage that they were walking into. And they also knew that it was the only way that by unifying was the only way that they could fend it off. Cool. You think you've brought out the best, the worst in people. I think you've brought out the best in them. So here's what I recommend. Um, I don't, I have no idea what role is happening here, but I just know that like, I'm yeah. really talking to Fiona that I am crossing blades with them. Although I'll do that too. I will. Yeah. Super yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think the I think the fight's about to happen. I think it's a matter of, do you get like a bonus die? Right. So 
let's just do it like a linked test. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the ob is six. Um, and I, I think you're, you know, you're, you're trying to like tell him how it is, how it really is and convince him of that mm -hmm. uh, in the midst of this slaughter so that, you know, I, and the other thing I think we should take into account is that, um, I mean, I, I, we could script this out as a fight, but I really liked the bloody verses we did with the, mm -hmm. uh, with the um with the coward so i'd be all up for having this breakdown with a as a bloody versus if you're up for it that sounds great to me yeah awesome all right so yeah i think let's make a, a links test uh ob six um to see if you can get uh, a bonus die for uh cool Shindig. um i'm gonna roll course persuasion yep um i think i am going to um <laughs> I think I'm going to be like, I feel a little cheatery at this, but this is what they're there for. I feel like all the people I've been naming, I'm going to call yeah. them the wises for them. Yeah, I like so it. I'm just yep. like going to bring in all, like troll wise, my, my, my uh, elf wise. And um, let's see, that's um One, two, that's five. Um, people wises. And yep. I, yeah, I, I, it's not quite, it's not quite ugly truth. But I feel like there, there's a point here of just being like, you're you were wrong. Like th this is what you got, and and it, it wasn't what you wanted. But I think that's the outcome of this role. It's not right. ugly truth isn't like that. That's what I want him to believe. So, uh, well, I'm gonna bring clan wise too because I've got clan dwarves here as well. Sounds good. They're so weird. Okay, so that's that's six. And I'm gonna, so I'm gonna do something weird. I'm looking at the linked test page on page 27, 28. Yeah. Um, and everyone knows that like the hot part of this game is, yes. uh, is, 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 is us reading the book to each other. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there's a bit about giving a bonus die for advantage. Um, and I think the advantage is that you're right, right? He did bring together elves, dwarves, and orcs and trolls in an unprecedented way. Um, yeah. And in a way that might have a really lasting effect on the world. And humans, so yeah. yeah, I'm I'm down with that. Awesome. All right. Curse persuasion. Six dice modifier of of six. I did not do it. Okay. However, you've got a call on. However, I've got a call on, and I failed a bunch of dice. I'm going to bring in my call on because I got a ton of sixes and then a ton of ones. So. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten failed dice there. Holy cow. So one, two, six. Uh well, it wasn't great, but that's one, two, three, four. Yep. You only needed you only needed two, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um and even if I misremembered his stats and he had a gray, you still hit it. So yeah. that's great. Um, yeah, I think you're going to get a bonus die on this bloody versus. That's awesome. Nice. Um, I think you, you you can see the truth of that hit him, right? Love it. Love it. And and I got to use my uh, which a, a, a trait I mean like I I knew about but I've forgotten. But I got to use my dispute settler. That was that is the oh, that, is nice. the, that is the trait. That is the call on and it's, love it. It's, it's it's a good one. That's very good. Cool. Let's uh let's do this. Let's set up this bloody versus. Let's set up a bloody versus. All right. What's the uh, procedure for doing bloody versus? Um, in bloody versus, both players divide their weapon skills plus forks and other advantages into two pools: one for attack and one for defense. 
Each player then rolls his attack pool and then his defense successes. Extra successes in the attack pool do damage as described in the weapons chapter section. In these rules, armor is an advantage. It is not tested separately as in full fight rules, mm -hmm. um, which means this all goes much faster. Uh, yeah. And I love Bloody Verses. I think it's it's tremendously underestimated, and and I just love it. I think it's a great way to go through even even really important campaign ending combats like this i think they're yeah. it's awesome uh so yeah um i'm down with it um so advantages to bloody versus attack uh someone has the longer weapon a shorter weapon versus armor uh i mean he's he's basically wielding a javelin kind of like a spear i think right yeah um i would say he probably has longer weapon that seems um sounds good i'm just looking for what page is it on sorry you uh oh uh bloody verses is on page 426 420 okay i was nowhere close um longer weapon shorter weapon oh that's weird oh long weapon is plus 1d when appropriate shorter weapon is plus 2d when appropriate i yeah. get it um, I, I'm gonna say it, it balances out because he's using a thrown weapon as a non-thrown weapon. Like I, I feel like, yeah, you're using a miner's tool and he's using a javelin in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Right. Um, and neither are perfect for that. Yeah. Neither is perfect for that. I, I'm gonna say that zeroes out. Okay. Um, you get a plus one D for the shield. Yep. Uh. I think he's got, uh, I think he's in, in light mail. So he's got plus two D. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would be wearing at least something. I think. Oh like yeah. You would be something. wearing something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think? Like light, light mail? I think so. I think I'd be wearing like light mail. Okay. I mean, it's not, it's not necessarily dwarven quality. I haven't made a resources test for this, but I feel like going out into this battlefield, I wouldn't be yeah. doing it. Yeah. Um, and you also get, uh, don't forget the plus one D for the shield. I will definitely take the shield, yeah. Um, I think he has the higher reflexes and the higher stride. He definitely does. Um, so I'm going to give him 2D got, for that. He's got 2D he can spend anywhere and 2D for defend only. And I've got 3D for defend only. Yep. A plus plus our, plus our, you know, what our skills and our force. Plus, and plus the skills, yep. Yeah. Um. um Cool. And I and I also have a bonus plus one D from the link test as well. That yes. I can, that I yep, yep, yep. And you can use that link test anywhere. Yep. The, yeah. That D goes wherever you want. All right. Cool. Um, so then I take his I mean, I, I don't think it's any secret that he has he has uh six uh javelin because like we've seen him practicing, right? Like this is Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's um, he's amazing at it. Absolutely. So he's got two in defense to start with. Um cool. So I've got a brawling, a G3 brawling. Yeah. This is the skill you use for improvised weapons. Yeah. I'm smacking it with my shield. I'm bashing it with my shoulder. I'm swinging my pick. Yeah. And I'm hitting him with the butt of it or, you know, I'm, there's no, there's nothing elegant about Polara's fighting style. Um, yeah. And uh, I don't know that I have a lot to fork in. Uh, I'm, I mean, Polara is not a fighter. Um, I, 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 I think I could make arguments for like spider wise, like knowing when them, them coming, but I think this is really just like a very personal, Yeah. well, I have elf wise and I have spent a lot of time with him. I don't know if he picked up dwarf wise or not, but, um, do you think I've seen him fight enough? Um, yes. I've seen him use those I'll give you that. that, that yeah. He sense? definitely, he, he. He definitely still fights like a an elf. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, if he didn't, I'd use spider wise, but, but yeah. Right. Okay. So I've got three, I've got three brawling dice plus one from uh uh plus plus uh sorry, blah blah blah. I've got three forking and elf wise, um, and then I've got an advantage dice. So I've got five dice. To, to split and then three automatically goes into defense. Okay, cool. So um, I've got his dice split up. He had a total of 10. He had a total of 10, yeah, that makes sense. I have a total of eight. It's not, 
That's not terrible. Not the worst. Um, it's that time in the game where I feel like it's time to do this. So I'm going to spend a deed. Nice. It's my second deed. I've spent a brawling, which is hilarious. I've never that thought of. Funny. I've never thought of of Plara as. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, but I think um, it. I think it doubles what? all my dice, right? Uh, I don't. Let's look at that. I Let's think it doubles it. the skill, but I could be wrong. I yeah. don't think it doubles all the forks. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Stick me because I may use it to just reroll failed the dice then instead. Yeah, um, that sounds like a, a smarter move. Yeah. Um, spending Artha, uh, double dice for one test. Oh, it doesn't say. It says. Double dice. Okay. Cool. I'm doing it. So I was at eight. I'm rolling 16. Holy shit. Um, and I'm actually going to, you can spend Arthur together as well. I think. You can yeah. Yeah. Both. You can. Yeah. 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 So let me rephrase that. I'm going to spend a persona. I want to save at least I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend. I only want to spend one persona because if I die here, I can. I have two left that I could use to stay on that store. So that's gonna be eight. Uh, so I'm eighteen dice. Holy shit! Because sugar. I'm spending. I'm spending a deed. Yeah. And a persona. So the way I would recommend you do that is divvy them up into the two attack and defense pools. Yeah. And then double those. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. It's nine dice, three of which have to go in defense, and then they'll get doubled. So. Okay. Uh... Okay. All right, I've got my pools. Do you want to roll his? You, should we each roll our defenses first so that sure. we know what our obs are for our attacks? Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to roll. Um, cool. Bone Orc Defense. I'm rolling it right now. Uh, he only set aside three. Yeah, he really wants to murder me. He oh. really wants to kill. I've got. Um, eight. He got. He got two successes. Okay. He's got. A, he's. 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 He's throwing grays. Yeah, I'm throwing grays as well because my brawling is gray. Yep. Um. Uh. Three, five. Okay. Oh. It's not quite true. One. Four. I have six. Oh, for your, for your uh, defense. For my defense. And okay. I'm going to spend a fate because I got three sixes there. Okay. That's two more. So I have eight in defense. I maybe I maybe leaned too much into defense. We'll see. All right. So my ob is two. His ob is eight. Yep. And Oh my lord. Oh shit, I rolled it on my table instead of It's fine. Oh, in the okay. in the thing. It's all good. I'm keeping track uh, of them. I was I was using dice to keep track of them because I find that easier than I, I uh, totally writing know. down. All right. I mean, I spent a deed and a percent on this. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I got nine successes to hit him. Yeah. Yeah, it was six, and then I, I had three sixes in there, and I exploded them, and I got three more. Yeah. I mean, you you decimated him. I uh, I think. Did he, what did he get on his attack? Um, he got. 
you got seven successes on seven dice um, and, and exploded a six, but uh, it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough. I think that's the interesting thing about this fight is that he did the best he could do. Yeah. And, and it was not enough. And I, I, I see it as, tell me how, how you see it. Um, I picture it as him just attacking and attacking and attacking. And, and there's a moment where he's used to wearing people down. And, and you don't get worn down. Nice. You know, and like when that moment happens, what do you, what, what does Pelara do then to this orc who used to be her friend? Yeah. Um, I want to add one little detail. I think he's just hammering her shield with his yeah. javelin over and over yeah. and over again. And she, he's denting it and denting it. I mean, this beautiful, amazing shield and it's being dented by this, by this mithril javelin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And finally, after hammering and hammering and hammering and hammering, finally the shaft snaps. Uh, the blade, the the blade just breaks and the shaft snaps, and he's stunned for a moment. And that's when Polara finally like has her opportunity. Is that like he has another javelin on his back, but it's that like this doesn't happen, right? He doesn't. Yeah. You know, his 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 his, his, his javelins don't, don't fail, and um, yeah. And and she says, "I'm doing this so that your sister doesn't have to." Oh and she freaking shit. plants a pick right in one of his eyes, just yeah. right in the head. Uh, I think she sees Dinarendel off in the distance. Yeah. And um uh, and 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 just ends him. Yeah. Um, um yeah, I think it goes into him and and um I mean I don't think a pick to the eye with gray strength leaves a lot of room for goodbyes, right? I think it's no, it's pretty. It's pretty gnarly. Yeah, without, yeah, without much I, detail, it's yeah, it's it's not. I think it's I think it's fast and uh, wet, and uh, nasty. And uh, um, I I think like by the time you pull your pick out of the ground and the corpse, uh, you know the 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 fight is over, and you can hear horns that you know signify that riders are chasing spiders as they as they break nice. um and run um which is what they were trying to do is 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 break them yeah uh and uh yeah i think uh i think that's a, that like well, what you said i'm doing this so your sister doesn't have to is exactly like what I was thinking and, and his sister strides across the battlefield, um, you know, blood on her cloak or ichor on her cloak and some blood, um, yeah. some of it hers. And uh, she looks down and says, uh, this is the orc who killed my brother. And Polara is like the pick is still in play, like, like, or no, maybe she's, but like uh, Polara has moved over to Bulat. I assume Bula has has, per has has perished at this point. Yeah. But she is like pulling off of his. She's like pulled off his breastplate and like put her hands over like the wound, and it's it's no use. Yeah. But but um but yeah she's she's kind of hanging over Bula and and looking at him and um again crying. Yeah. And her shield's on the ground and she's a mess. Uh and and uh, and she looks up. Um, yeah, and I think says, like, like, um, I think when 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 the Ethark, when when Din Arneliel sees the wound in in Bulat's chest, you know, you, you hear her gasp, and and she puts her hand on your shoulder as if you know, to help you with your grief. Yeah, because she knows that you two are friends, and and she's been traveling with you for weeks, and 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 you know you've all gotten to know each other and uh yeah. and she she kneels on the ground uh she puts the sword like in the ground and uh and yeah the you know the sword with some name like uh uh when the dawn 
when the light, first light of dawn looks like blood in the sky or something, you know, it's nice. something like that. And uh, and and she she sticks the sword in the ground and and kneels and puts her hand on your shoulder, and and Bulat says, "I'm fine. I, I, I've taken worse than this. I'm going to walk away from this. Help me up." Um. And and I think like as you like take his hand or as he like as he takes your hand, um, he smiles. And uh, and then he's he's gone. Like right. one minute, like he was there, and then he was not. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, so. So I didn't mean to not answer her first question, but I think that instead of saying anything, yeah, well, I just nodded. I love it. She asked when she said because she was looking looking up up, up a lot. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah, she's got his hand. Um, uh, she doesn't have a mailed fist. She's not used to running a gauntlet. So she's like holding his hand. And uh, yeah, and then he, he, yeah, when he dies. Um, I think that's a great place to end moment it. to end the campaign. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Love it. Love it. That's had no idea where it was going to go. Can't believe that of my two deeds, I sent them both on brawling. <laughs> and we've had exactly two brawls We've in this had campaign. two fights yeah exactly i also think it's interesting that the coward with a knife came closer to killing you than the orc like that was a tie oh yeah that was a tie absolutely and and that was i mean i more... was unprepared i didn't have you know I yeah didn't, i wasn't ready for it and yeah. i wasn't going all at it either you're like oh this thing happens i was like what you know this was the battle that i had been thinking about dreading Right. For months, for a year, honestly. I kind of love that. I love that that this vicious orc was not more uh, danger than, um, you know. Uh, than an outcast or. An, an outcast with a, a rusty knife. Yeah. Uh, I think that's super cool. Um, that's awesome, Sean. I, I think Polara was so damn interesting. I did not think this was going to be. a tour of the Dwarven princes and holdfasts. Like no, that's just not I. right. I thought this campaign was going to be out foxing a dragon and like trying to, trying to tunnel around him and, and brewing Nog and brewing Nog. Yeah. And uh, I had no idea that it was going to, you know, Polaro become Prince. And yeah. And, and even though she had some major holes in her princeliness, like uh like her circles tests and her, her and her resources stat and there was like massive holes in her ability to be prince she also like was mechanically speaking a very very good one in lots of ways and, yeah yeah uh, it was sort of delightful to play up that rather than having a ton of money or a huge connection with the guilders she just knew a lot of people and that's really what served her her wises are the thing that made her a good prince rather than her totally. resources stat or her circles yeah right. yeah yeah no it was it yeah. was her ability to know about how people worked in her society yeah yeah and and yeah i love that i love that about her and it was it was also cool because game wise it made this very different than bina um, oh, yeah. who was who was in a world that she was ill suited for yeah um and we got to play that in ways that weren't frustrating and were fun but it was also cool to rock out and and uh I don't know, like really succeed at more roles than you failed. Not that you didn't fail, you did. Oh yeah, I failed a um, few times, but you're right. I was, And it's so funny because when I first came to you about this, I was like, I have these like three or four different ideas for dwarves and like several of them were very high status. Like I'm going to be an artificer who, who made the weapons to fight the dragon or I'm yeah. going to be a, a warden who's leading the troops to fight the dragon. And both of us were like, eh, you know, what's actually a lot more fun. It's just like this clan dwarf who's got a job yeah. to do. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to drill it. And all of us were, both of us were like, yeah, this low status character is going to be way, way more fun to see her yeah. adventures. And yeah, then yeah. she's now Prince, you know, it's, it's, right. it's, um, right. 
Yeah. Thank you for just entertaining all of these kind of like wild ideas as I'm like, uh, oh yeah, I'm now Prince of the Vault. That's how things are going to be. And yeah. the world, you know, and it wasn't like you gave it to me, but you, you uh, kind of walked that path. Yeah, I was down with it. I mean, I, I think, you know, the world tried to stop you. Like, not that I tried to stop you, but um, yeah, you, you just kind of walked through a bunch of really high ob tests that could have really decimated your Princeton and ended it fast. And, and yeah, I mean, if we look at the obs that, that this game had, they're, they're shocking. I mean, they're very high. Yeah. They're, they're really high. Like six successes, 13 successes, three successes, 10 successes, one, six, six, two, zero, one, seven, 10, three successes, five successes, five successes, two, nine, five, three. I mean, yeah. that those are hot. Like a five yeah. ob is a lot. Like a five ob is a lot. And you were, like, you were throwing ob six and higher at me often. Not, not, yeah. not frivolously, not, not like, right. Not like without thought. Um, it's like, this is the world you're in, you know? And I, I, I yeah. luckily have played in a lot of games where, I mean, Dwarven Prince, if you burn it up in Burning Wheel, um, Dwarven Prince is kind of the most powerful character you can almost make in the game. Mm. Um, so they've just got ludicrous resources. And and um, it, it's funny because I had the opposite happen to me um, in a game. I was I, I was told, told my friends, a, a couple of my friends and I were talking about the Forgotten Realms and the like the promise of the original gray box set. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, here's what we're going to do. All of us love Burning Wheel. Let's play a game set in Waterdeep. I want blood on the cobblestones, gritty Burning Wheel Waterdeep. And they were like, awesome. They go to their corners. They come back and they're like, here are our characters. One is a 400 year old elf chronicler who, when we looked at the timeline, he wasn't like, a, a sword elf or anything. He was literally like a chronicler. Uh -huh. And we looked at his the, his life paths and we realized that he had been in Waterdeep since it was an unsettled plot of land with like a bunch of cattle on it <laughs> that, that pirates would stop at to like get meat and water. Like it, he, he had seen Waterdeep built around his house. Like, he, and then the other character was a deposed Dwarven prince who led an adventuring company. And I was like, did you guys, like, do we, do we not understand what gritty means? Like, I, I, and it was, it was a great game. But uh, what I'm saying is, is that I, I know the kind of, like, the kind of stuff that a, a prince would have to deal with. And, and a lot of those obs were, were, will, were wills, right? Yeah. Because, like, you're dealing with people with either who have a flat out six will or who have a gray six will, so that bumps it to eight. Yeah. So in order to be true to the setting, I had to throw out like just ludicrous obs and yeah. and 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 be ready for you to fail, uh, knowing that you know we can deal with that and and burning wheel handles that fine. Um, anyway, I loved it. I, what I'm saying is this is the opposite of that game, and that game was awesome too. That that burning realms game was fantastic, but. Uh, it was cool to see uh, a working class dwarf rise up to the princedom and and just kill it, like because, like you said, she knows people and she appreciates people and and she, I don't know, I, yeah, I, I feel also I feel like we we need to put this game in its place in time, right? Um, I feel like Bina was in a more normal time, yeah, than. In the our history world, of the in, our, in, in our life, yeah, in absolutely. our lives, yeah, and this game was like it started right as COVID started, right, and so yeah. we, I don't know, I just loved that. I loved that aspect of it, and then realizing that you got you, you swore an oath to this dragon, so you had to do your old job but you had to do it in a new dangerous way in a new dangerous context, which is exactly what you have to do in COVID. <laughs> and then, yeah. and like, and also not see your family for a year. Right. Yeah. So like, yeah. again, like again, COVID 
and then you know playing this game through what very likely w w was was an attempted coup and just be like well i'm a working class person but i'm i'm taking a leadership position because everyone else is fucking it up yeah and and it was very gratifying to see like it just was very satisfying um so anyway that's my like long no i thank rant. you i appreciate yeah. it and I, I i felt i mean i i was not there were a lot of parts of this game where i have thought in advance and i prepared uh for them uh and i prepared for them um thinking oh i want to do this that the other but i had no idea what i was going to say to axo orco when 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 i saw him and i i yeah. felt like it was so perfect of being like what did you know what is it you want and he's like i just wanted this i wanted carnage and bloodshed and javadry and i was like look again and it was such a rewarding moment to just be like look at what you're actually saying yes you're seeing all of that but also you're seeing right. all these people fighting side by side right. and they would only do that because of this threat and i don't want to at all uh say in the real world that 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 wars are good that wars are atrocious and awful no but i i the idea the metaphor there of somebody being awful and um, and people really unifying um, to stop that, I think is yeah. is, is great and um, yeah, it was very fun to to uh, to get to live that out. And also, like this character, Fiona Cecile, has been around since Bina Janos episode two or three. Oh shit! You put a pick in his eye. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> love it oh my oh that's oh i didn't even think of that i know right holy oh my god that's so rich okay if you are just listening or just saying fiona blinded bina he took her eye for singing she, a song poorly because she sang a song poorly i didn't even think of that at all that was just i, I just got it like i yeah uh, man <laughs> fucking gaming man what's better than that what how could you yeah. To 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 paraphrase a line from Moneyball, how could you not be romantic about gaming? It's just yeah. the best. Yeah, oh, talk about Apo Finia right there. Just yeah, like, I had no plans with that pick, but it makes total sense. Yeah, that's beautiful. That, that guy, uh, toxic, abusive yep. good dude. Yep. Just needed to go. Yeah, he needed to go. Uh, should we? Uh, because this is a chronicle of sorts, because we do we pick up, we, we, yeah, we may pick up, we may pick up Polara later and we may, yeah, what she does, um, uh, is affecting the next, the next saga. Uh, yeah, that's Jortha. Um, cool. Let me get her beliefs in front of me. Yeah, do the same. They've been out all game. Uh, driving the game forward with a belief. Um, the fell spiders, the fell spiders hunger can never be sated. We must stop them now before they grow too strong. I'll walk the dragon road if that's what it takes. To face them. Uh, but you didn't have to, and I you didn't. didn't. Uh, yeah. so I think, I think that's a persona. I mean, you, you stopped them, right? Yep. I think so. Cool. Orcs know more than hate. They know about community. I will convince the Dwarven princes to start our journey of reconciliation by joining forces of them in battle. I think that's another persona. Yeah. And then Prince Bula, uh, that's another persona. Nice. Uh, playing an instinct that makes the character's life difficult. Any? Uh, I think um, I think it it lost my fourth instinct because um, is get a. Oh shit! Yeah, um, take but, a that, but I want to fate for that one because yeah, um, yeah it did make it did make my life difficult. Yep. Twinge. Love it. Yeah. Um, cool. Playing a character trait that sends the story in an unforeseen direction. Um, bearded, folksy wisdom, aches and pains, homesick. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, I feel like, hum yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, humor. No. Sometimes we give those to NPCs too, which is always fun. But yeah, yeah. was there was there any? Yeah, I don't think so. I, I can't really think of any. 
other than the fact that you put a pick in his eye uh, is great. Um, right skill, right time. I think a fate is reasonable to say there for, for yeah. I think that the, the right skill at the right time is having course persuasion to get all of my troops to stay together before yeah. uh, I left them. Yep. Yep. I can dig that. Cool. Um, cool. And I think maybe another deeds for bringing all of these disparate people together. Yeah, I think it's greater goals, right? It's, yeah. it's accomplishing goals bigger than you. Yeah, I think like the effects of this are going to ring out, definitely. Yeah. Cool. I also, not that I'm super needing it, but I really feel like Polara was a workhorse in this. Like yeah. she just did so much here. It was like, yep, yep, get a persona with the gods and and, and yeah. your omens. And yeah, yeah, it just felt like, all right, so that's, Three, four persona, two fate, and one deed. Cool. Thanks. One. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Judd. And thank you. This, that was a lot of this, fun. This, this has been, yeah. No, do go. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I think we're just gonna say say so much of the same things. Uh, yeah, Polara has just been, it's such a, like Bina did not fundamentally change. Bina was a character who, she changed some, she changed quite a bit in terms of her fortitude, but she didn't, she, she was still a peasant at the end of that game. She was just a peasant that like a lot of people uh, got to know and had some yeah. faith in. Um, and but she changed the world in a huge way, and in a yeah. way that I didn't think was I didn't think was necessarily possible. But it was like, well, let's play to find out. And Polara is a character who also changed the world in a huge way, but she she changed in ways I had no expectation to. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and I I love how Bina like left her bigger world, left her small, pretty small world, and like caught a glimpse of the bigger world and then we liked it and we were like let's 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 play there like that little like she like looked under the door and like could see like this bigger room we were like yeah. let's play in the bigger room and then like the room kept getting bigger you know and it yeah. just um just naturally and and without trying uh it just kept the world building kept kind of snowballing yeah. Um, and now that we're here, I'm kind of interested in the third and possibly final who knows what book. Yeah. Where. Uh, yeah, where, where maybe we, we pick it up with, with Bina's kid, who is like the prophesied archmage. Oh, yeah. We um, have to. Nara has to. Nara has to be. The, 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 I, I feel like Nara has yeah. to be the, the next character. Yeah. Um, um, and I, I love thinking about these as books. I've made a bunch of, I made, I've made each campaign like a book cover because I've been playing with that fun layout art sorcery uh, through COVID. And um, so it's fun to think of these as books and to think of like, this is a trilogy, but then there are always like, every once in a while, there's like, an author who's popular enough where they, they've got the main trilogy, but then they write like another one-off book about a character who is really popular. And I yeah. could see Pilara like getting another book at some point, maybe. Yeah, you think like, she'd be the Drist Orden of, the, of this, of this oh, story? <laughs> totally, totally the Drist, uh, uh, absolutely. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I, could see the, I could see us going back. I could also see us playing through Nara and saying, you know what? let's either leave it right there or let's start another trilogy 200 years later in the yeah, world or, or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think there's interesting stuff. I think it's cool. Yeah. Um, I also liked the kind of theme of, you know, how much do you want to change to change the world in this one? Uh, because I feel like if you had become a dragon, that would have been a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, if you had failed, and the Ethark had had to put her brother down. 
that would have like enhanced her grief and like would that have would that have sped up the elves leaving you know um and and changed the world so anyway great stuff it's it's to me it really felt like for polara it felt like i can honor bulat's desire and stay who i am and he'll die or right. I can throw away everything that he cares about and I can go down that dragon run myself and be a dragon and protect him, but I can't do both. That was at right. least the, the, and it wasn't like a die, it wasn't like a die result kind of thing. It was a moral ch- choice for Polar. It was a moral yes or no. There wasn't a way to like get the both. I was like, well, yeah. And, and that was a fun choice to have to make and it was just like cool. let, let my friend die or or become the thing he would hate if I yeah did. yeah I it was it was just because i mean he you know hated the dragon and yeah and and it yeah. was what chained his brother and like if he knew that i had become uh uh the, the very thing that he hated you know that he fought against i don't know yeah i mean it, it it's just because your your beliefs were so interesting right you they were so well written that that conflict came because i was looking at them and i was like i don't want a duel of wits but i do want this to be very difficult yeah um i think the way to do that is to like give you some foreknowledge and use the magic and be like yeah magic worked in some weird way that you know your 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 sixth sense got enhanced for a second and you saw death or or whatever and i love it it's perfect i I, I love that that's and that that, and that was the thing that got polara on this mission in the first place right yep there's there's six sense so it's, it's great awesome all right, everybody. That, that, and thank you for joining us, everybody. It's been really yeah. great to have you here. And and your your, you know, the, the YouTube comments we've been getting have been really lovely and awesome. So thank you for that. If you're listening to this on YouTube, uh, we appreciate. You know, if you if you have any thoughts or questions or anything about it, please, please, please post it because we, the absolute. Uh, yesterday, Sean sent me a, a great comment that was on the, the YouTube channel, and and it, straight up made my day. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Um, we've got more games coming up. I think you're playing Rebel Crown tomorrow. Is that right? Awesome. Yes, sir. Yep. Rebel Crown tomorrow. And uh, and we've got Court of Blades as well. We've got all sorts of uh, games of thro- Game of Throny uh, uh, Boards in the Dark action on the channel. Now. So, uh, and Judd and I will be back. We don't know exactly when, but we'll be back uh, for another another uh, saga of Burning Yeah, we've got book three. Yeah. All right. Take care all. All right.